Have you ever gotten into a heated discussion with someone, perhaps on politics or even the question of the best ice cream flavor? But when realizing that you might have been wrong, you're simply in too deep to just back off your claims. Perhaps you've been on the opposite side of the situation where you notice that the person opposite to you is just not listening and is only repeating the same talking points over and over again. Well, I know that I have. And in fact, I believe that this tendency to only care about the side we associate ourselves with or winning an argument than the truth and the facts is a quite prominent issue in our public discourse that only leads to growing hostility between members of our society and prevents real social improvement and growth. It was only this year, on January 6th, that an organized mob broke into and vandalized the US Congress. Now, there are many reasons for the insurrection. But I believe that the growing hostility between those who are associated with different politi political parties, which is often fueled by politicians, is a testament to the point I will be making here today. My name is Ron Friedman, I am 16 years old, and today I will be telling you that it's right to be wrong. Personally, I'm known among my friends as someone who often gets into heated discussions and might even enjoy them at times. For example, once in English class, a couple of us students along with a teacher got into a heated debate on gun restrictions. Now, I remember feeling quite worked up because at the end of the day, this is a topic that affects countless people's lives. To be honest, I was a little shocked to hear that my friends have quite contradictory opinions to mine. But at the end of the day, we were able to dive deeper into this topic that is otherwise not usually respectfully discussed. And we, were, we carefully listened to each other and even ended up agreeing. So these types of discussions are only encouraged because it is only when we listen to those who have contrasting opinions to our own that we can really learn, improve, and grow. The issue, however, arises when we approach discussions close-mindedly. When we enter a conversation, a conversation thinking that we are unconditionally right, the feeling that often emerges is that we cannot back down. There's no way I can simply accept defeat. I can't just let them win. From this point on, the conversation is not in good faith. The discussion is an unconstructive argument, which, especially when talking about real world issues, is extremely vain. At the end of the day, the topics we discuss have real life impl uh, implications on, on people. They're, pa they're not just an activity that we can do to pass our lunchtime. A relevant example of this is the recent misinformation spread online regarding COVID-19 anti-mask, anti-vax, and anti-science conspiracy theories have been widely spread during the pandemic and have even led to mass protests and demonstrations, such as the one in Berlin on, October, on August the 29th of last year, which uh, even ended up on the steps of the Reichstag in an eerily similar attempt to that of the US insurrectionists of breaking into the building. This occurrence on and offline is generally also described by World Health Organization experts as an infodemic. But when we talk a, about a polarized public discourse, we cannot ignore political polarization. The excessive association with a certain political side or party may have wider effects on our society than we realize. A report by scholars from the universities of Stanford and Pennsylvania has concluded that polarization has consequences on our romantic relationships, social relationships, and either, even our economic choices. For example, data suggests that the percentage of parents in the United States would be unsatisfied in the case that their children married with a person of the opposite political affiliation has risen by over 35% in the last 50 years. Similarly, over 60% of Americans report that they do not have any friends of the opposite political affiliation. Furthermore, the data suggests that job applicants who match the political affiliation of areas with high concentrations of the same affiliation are more likely to be hired for a job. Interestingly though, a different uh, research report suggests that the case is not so similar here in Germany. Effective polarization refers to the extent to which citizens feel more negatively towards parties other than their own. This figure has actually declined by over 10% since the early 2000s here in Germany. But what can we do about all of this? How can we as individuals change this? Well, my answer comes in three parts. First, be self-aware. We need to be aware of ourselves and not let emotions take over purely fact-based discussions. Of course, this isn't always the case because ultimately when we talk about real world issues that affect real lives, emotions and the impact of the topic on those people are incredibly important and might even add to the conversation. 
but preparing ourselves to be wrong and make mistakes, or even more importantly, simply be willing to learn as we, to, to change our minds as we learn new things is vital for a healthy public discourse. Secondly, be willing to compromise. Approaching conversations with the will to compromise, acknowledging that the person in front of me just fiercely believes in their stance just as much as I do, may actually lead to results, and who knows, maybe even agreement. Thirdly, actively listen. So many disagreements could be prevented if only we actively listen to the person in front of us, instead of just immediately dismissing their opinions because we don't like how they sound. I know that at times, in the heat of discussion, I tend to not want to listen anymore. And I know that so many of my own disagreements and arguments could have just ended entirely differently if only I just listened. But let's go back to the topic of discussions in bad faith, those we, we approach close-mindedly. More importantly, our fear of being wrong. If you haven't been able to relate to what I've said so far, I'm sure that the following would sound familiar. As students, we are often afraid to participate in class or answer a question for the sole reason of fearing our mistakes and being afraid to be wrong. I know that I have experienced that before, and maybe you have too. This once again ties down to the idea that we have to always be right, and maybe our belief that being wrong is frowned upon. But no, ultimately, being wrong is our best opportunity to learn and improve. And actually, if in, the, in a classroom, the place with the defined purpose of providing a space for us students to, to learn new things, we feel as though as we can, as though we cannot make mistakes, how do we expect ourselves to go out and be open-minded when we are debating politics? Now, I have a message to you parents. Teach your children to embrace their mistakes. Mistakes lead to creativity and help develop critical thinking. The phrase, if we don't fall, we don't learn, doesn't only apply in the literal sense. Teaching children to fear being wrong and making mistakes only promotes a fixed mindset, whereas we should always strive for growth. Now, I would like to ask you that the next time you get into any discussion about anything with anyone, you really do take the time to, firstly, be self-aware, secondly, come into the discussion with the will to compromise, and lastly, actively listen to the person in front of you. Thank you.